Hey wonderful viewers and welcome back. A Randlesham update. So when I was making the films, I was contacted by, I think he has to remain anonymous. And today he wrote to me and said, did I know that that part of Suffolk, where Randlesham Forest is, has interesting geology underneath the ground? And um, he was going to try and find a UK geological survey link that I could find. And I beat him to it and looked at it. And in fact, it's actually very boring. Suffolk, East Suffolk, is actually sedimentary. It's mainly gravel. There's a bit of limestone, the sand. There isn't any weird, unusual magnetic properties, minerals really underneath that part of Suffolk. But in the UK Geological Survey, with this map of Suffolk, it specifically mentions the gravity anomaly. Uh, what's that? So I dug in, and here's a map of gravity in the Orford Ness area. And look, there's a massive blue dip and a red high just off the coast of Orford Ness. Sadly, it's not right in the middle of Rendlesham Forest. I mean, that would be a, a massive smoking gun. But there is definitely a high and a low gravity anomaly right in the area that these things occurred. Is this related? Oh, I don't know. No idea. But I'll tell you another story, and this is, this is just fascinating. In the Apollo era, the idea was to land a man on the moon before the end of the decade, as you know. And so Apollo 10 was going to do a low pass over the moon uh, to, practicing a landing, but not land. And the, the one of the astronauts at Apollo 10 was so keen to say, well, if I'm going all the way down to the surface of the moon, why don't I just land? And he said this in the bar in Houston. So NASA took off the ascent motor from the lunar landing module and said, I wouldn't land if I were you because you won't get home. Supposedly a true story. But anyway, what happened in Apollo 10 is that they got close to the moon and they used a gravity measuring device as a um, range finder for the height above the surface of the moon. And it went wild. What they didn't know at the time is that the moon, just like Orford Ness, has extreme gravity anomalies, high and low. They only saved the day on Apollo 10 by turning the gravity height measurement device off and flying the lunar module manually, or else they would have crashed, supposedly. Another fascinating story about Apollo is that Apollo 10 was going to do this low pass, and they thought Apollo 13 would be the first successful people on the moon. 11, the one afterwards, great pilots, buzz and nail, but the chances of them landing successfully was really low. 12? Yeah, they really wanted 12 to make it to the moon because it would be just under the end of the decade. But they counted that 13 would be the first successful landing on the moon. How wrong they were. Buzz and Neil on Apollo 11 landed successfully. But it was only because of Neil Armstrong's great flying ability in the... If you know the story, just as he's coming into land, they say that there's boulders at the landing site the size of VW bugs. I love this as a VW driver. And Neil used his momentum that he still had from his descent to move the lunar lander sideways and then set it down, missing a VW bug on the moon. Brilliant story and great piloting by Neil and 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 buzz it's a fantastic story but it was always going to be apollo 13 was going to be the first lunar landing well it wasn't but back to rendlesham thank you so much everybody who's been getting in touch and telling me what they know 
uh, a number of people on Patreon who are very deeply connected personally and their family with what happened those fateful nights. They have been very interesting and are fascinated to, with my approach to it. For the first time, they're saying there is a timeline from Foo Fighters' radar right through to Rendlesham. I think they are connected. And thank you, the viewers, generally for showing such interest in this topic. I think between us, by digging into classified stuff, we might actually begin to understand what actually they encountered at Rendlesham. And then, of course, will we discover what they did, what Stanford research actually discovered, and how whatever it was that they encountered was weaponized and used today. I think that's going to be difficult, <laughs> but you never know. Stay tuned. And remember, because of you, the truth is out there. And welcome back. We've all heard of Isaac Newton and the apple 1687. He was sitting under his apple tree in his family home in Lincolnshire when an apple fell. This triggered the most amazing thing in science. He wrote about gravity. For nearly a hundred years, Isaac Newton's theories were unchallenged until... Along came Pierre Bouguet, a wonderful healthy rivalry between Britain and France produced this guy. Mr. Bouguet said, Okay, Isaac, you've got it right, but not exactly. I can make it more accurate. And that's what he did. Bouguet proposed, and did scientific experiments to prove it, that gravity varies over the surface of our planet. And a wonderful aside, Pierre Bouguet did not call his discovered variations after Newton. He named them after Galileo, and to this day, these variations are called gals or milligals. So, Pierre Bouguet's rival observations that challenged Newton from France didn't really add up too much. They were interesting, but not that relevant until now. Scientists became re-interested in Earth's gravitational anomalies when we started building missiles. occurrences of a near disaster due to gravitational anomalies was Apollo 10. Apollo 10, man's second journey to orbit the moon, was a full-scale rehearsal of all of the activities required to land men on the lunar surface 
except for the actual landing. Ten, nine, we have ignition sequence start. Engines on, five, four, three, two, all engines running. On the third day of the mission, as Apollo 10 approached the moon, the main engine was again ignited to slow the spacecraft, allowing it to be pulled into orbit of the moon by lunar gravity. They orbited the moon, the lunar lander separated, and they went way down towards the surface of the moon. Using a sophisticated gravitational measurement device, they discovered the moon varied. When they got really close to the surface, the readings went haywire and they nearly crashed. Immediately after staging, an unexpected maneuver occurred due to a procedural problem. Commander Stafford immediately took over manual control of the lunar module ascent stage and corrected the situation. This near disaster was caused by anomalies inside the moon called mascons, or areas of high gravitational fields. It was very interesting and nearly did cause a disaster, but how is it relevant to today? Well, let's spool forward to today, and we have cruise missiles and other surface of the earth hugging aircraft that need to measure accurately the gravitational force of our planet. Using space assets and airplanes, we have now measured the variation of gravity over our whole Earth. And it's not even. Look at this amazing map that has been produced. On our planet are strange areas of anomaly. Look at this extremely low dip just off the southern coast of the continent of India. And one of the strangest anomalies is for the people of Illinois. If Isaac Newton had been born in Illinois, his apple would have weighed more. There is a surprising hotspot in southern Illinois. My research has also turned up a bit of secret squirrel stuff. It turns out if you want to find a submarine, one of the best ways is look for gravitational anomalies caused by the large steel vessel under the sea. But to do that, you have to know accurately the background gravity field. So today there are extremely accurate maps of the whole of the planet. So next time you go and buy a pound or a kilogram of apples, maybe you should check the gravitational anomalies in your supermarket. Thank you, Pierre Bouguet and wonderful friends for pushing our knowledge forward because the truth is out there.